YouTube, how's that going? The Goat House is back. And today I'm going to go over some fantasy rankings, each position group, safest picks, risky picks, some more sleepers. Recent videos we went over some sleepers, but mainly must drafts in my opinion. So a couple more fantasy videos on the way this week. Going to do multiple mock drafts, different draft positions, get a different you know idea from a different perspective here. Uh, so And then back to the regular scheduled videos, predictions, final season predictions, who will win the Super Bowl. We'll get to all that, and then we'll have our full coverage in season. If you want to join our Fantasy League, you actually go to a, that link in the description in the comments, patreon.com slash the goat house. You're going to want to scroll down a little bit, see all four levels, uh, and in the final tier, you get a bunch of stuff. A lot of it's for in-season get score predictions from... I do score predictions every single week on the channel already, but some of the other Goat House guys will give you their score predictions here. Uh, but you get that entry into our Fantasy League with the prize, a merch prize here from the Goat House. Uh, some people have joined it. If it fills up, we'll create another one if more people want to join. So I uh, would appreciate it if you could just check this page out. There's a link in the description in the comments. And then, um, yeah, we're trying to reach that 60K goal by early in the season. Full NFL coverage, weekly picks. I do score predictions myself. Power rankings update every single, week, every single week and plenty more. I talk live during every single game pretty much on that Twitter. You're going to want to follow that Twitter, Instagram. Uh, going to be more active on the Instagram during the season. And then we have a podcast as well. So anything that you need there that you see on the screen, there'll be a link in the description in the comments. But let's move on here. Start with the quarterbacks. So my top 12 quarterbacks here, I put Lamar Jackson at the top, was back and forth on Mahomes, but I mean, Lamar Jackson with his running ability, you, you got to go with him number one. I definitely think, I'm confident he'll improve in the passing game, so that that's obviously a bonus as well. Obviously dominated fantasy, dominated in general last year. I got Mahomes at two, we know he'll... He'll air it out. They want to run the ball a little more, but they're also going to throw the ball a ton to the back. Clyde Edwards Hilary is a home run hitter when, you know, getting the ball in the passing game. So that's going to rack up some points for Patrick Mahomes. I got Dak at three. Dak's going to have another year with a uh, high productivity, really. Uh, you add CD Lamb to the mix. You had Mike McCarthy, less um, you know conservative play calling, uh, and a very good receiver trio. Pretty good running back duo as well. Uh, and that's going to help Dak Prescott all together. So I'm very confident with Dak. Russell Wilson, obvious, um, you know, top five guy. Deshaun Watson, I don't think, some people want to say he takes a hit because of uh, no DeAndre Hopkins. I'm going to say that's false. Uh, they got, uh, actually, they're they're deeper at the receiver position now. More of a rotation that actually fits Deshaun Watson's game. Uh, and, and they're going to get the ball you know, to, to several guys downfield. So I still expect, and he's going to continue to improve. Offense line, in my opinion, is better. That helps Deshaun Watson improve. Uh, and then you look at Kyler Murray. I think, uh, you know, looking at the style of all, it goes, it goes without saying here, looking out at the system, uh, the Kyler Murray system, the Cliff Kingsbury system, they're going to air the ball out. They got DeAndre Hopkins. Kyler Murray can run. Obviously, he can run in some scores. And then he's improving every step of the way. Uh, you look at the schedule as well, pretty favorable schedule. I think statistic-wise, which goes into fantasy, very, very productive. I got Tom Brady at 7. I'm probably higher on Tom Brady than most people, but I'm confident with him uh, in this area because I think he's going to rack up the touchdowns. You know, Tom Brady's got something to prove as well, moving to the, going over to Tampa Bay, and but he's got Chris Godwin, Mike Evans, Gronkowski, you know, the, that tight end group. He's going to rack up a ton of touchdowns. Uh, in this Bruce Arians offense, I got Matt Ryan at eight, Josh Allen at nine, Carson Wentz at ten. Staying healthy is the key there. Aaron Rodgers, and then Jared Goff. Goff will have the turnovers, but he'll rack up uh, you know a good amount of production statistics wise. Uh, but yeah, there is a little bit of a drop off in there. So we're talking about the safe picks, the guys I view as a safe. Pick. I think Patrick Mahomes is probably the safest one. Uh, again, I think I like Dak a lot. I think Dak's pretty safe. Russell Wilson, obviously. I consider Lamar Jackson safe as well. Um, you know, the only thing that you could argue against that is not really 100% proven as a passer for some people. Uh, and that much running, can he get hurt? It's always the question to back people's minds. I'm pretty confident. It's a safe, good amount of points for you every single week. Deshaun Watson and Matt Ryan seems like a pretty sure thing every year with um, you know being consistent in terms of points. Risky picks, I'd probably put Big Ben as the riskiest pick. You know, probably would make the tw top 12 if he wasn't so risky. Um, you know, coming off uh, interesting elbow surgery that no one's really had or came back from. Um, you know, worries about him short arming some throws. Just worries in general about him staying healthy. So, I mean, 12 teams in most leagues, 
Uh, I, I wouldn't draft Big Ben to be your starting quarterback just because of the risk. Matt Stafford, it's kind of borderline there. You almost want Stafford, uh, but if you can trust him throughout the whole season, you know, it seems to pop up the injuries or him playing not as good as the way he started years off, and that's because of an injury in the past. You know, I think two years ago he started to, his play started to go down a little bit because of some, uh, you know, back injury that kind of got worse and worse. Uh, then we see him get injured last year. Tom Brady, I think, is a little risky. You know, is he declining? Will he be the same first year in Tampa? I'm not too worried. I think most people will consider him risky, though. Josh Allen, you know, Josh Allen needs to take a step up, needs to improve. I think he will. Uh, but it's, you know, it's again, it's a little risky because you don't know what 100% to expect from him. Carson Wentz, um, you know, a little inconsistent last year and has the injuries pop up. Daniel Jones, still unproven to me, was shockingly impressive last year to everyone. Uh, does fumble the ball a bit, can turn the ball over, uh, but he can air it out. And, and are we going to get the similar Daniel Jones? Are we going to get improved, or is it going to go back to the Daniel Jones we thought we were going to get? I think Baker's pretty risky, not because he turned the ball over a lot last year. I think they'll cut that down big time. It's because we really don't know what this offense is about 100%, but I have an idea of Stefanski's offense. It's a pretty conservative offense. Um, you know, not a, bu- a bunch of uh, crazy big plays downfield. With them. I mean, he, there will be here and there, but I don't know if there'll be that much production for Baker Mayfield. I'm staying away from Dolphins quarterbacks. I'm staying away from Chargers quarterbacks and the Bears quarterbacks. It's up in the air how many games those guys will actually start. I think that's pretty obvious there. Sleepers, Derek Carr, early last year looked great. They add more to the... Uh, to the talent pool around him, and we know he really can, you know, that they're a high powered passing offense at times. So that's why he's a sleeper. I consider Tom Brady a sleeper. You see how much I like him. I think people are a little low on him. Joe Burrow, uh, the best prospect I've, I've ever seen at the quarterback position, and I think he's pro ready. The question is with the offensive line, but that could be a sleeper. Uh, Kirk Cousins, I think, is a sleeper. Because you look at how much he improved from year one to year two on the Vikings. If he can improve again, then he can be a pretty darn good uh, fantasy quarterback here. The only problem is, yeah, they have a little conservative offense, like to give the ball to the backs a lot. So not a whole bunch, a whole bunch of opportunities uh, for Cousins to light up the fantasy scoreboard. And Drew Locke, Drew Locke and Eric Deep, uh, he has the receiver trio now, the receiver options even at tight end. Uh, you know, so I think Drew Locke could be, you will know, we'll see some inconsistencies. I think, I think one week he'll put up some crazy, you know, starter worthy fantasy points. And there's one week where, where he'll kind of let you down a little bit. Um, but it's definitely a sleeper guy to look out for. Let's move on to the running backs. McCaffrey's got to be number one. If you have the first pick, you got to go McCaffrey. Uh, I, I do worry about the interior blocking for him though. But that's really not going to stop him from getting the yards, getting the points. Uh, but he'll heavily be involved in that passing game. That's the key here. I'm going to put Saquon at two. Hopefully no minor injuries pop up. I think they were just playing it safe. You hear him kind of complaining that he wants to get back out there. Uh, you know, Last year, I think they were just kind of playing it safe. So now they can go full go with him. I think the offensive line's improved, especially the interior. I think it's going to keep getting better each step of the way. Uh, Zeke's a pretty safe pick there at three. I got Derrick Henry at four. I think another safe pick. Uh, and Dalvin Cook and Alvin Kamara, I think similar style running backs and similar style kind of fantasy-wise. Uh, they're both a little risky, but they both, but if they're healthy, they're, they both potentially could be that top guy. Really could be that good. Cook a little more injury concern than Kamara uh, a little bit. I think Cook's a little bit better too and more explosive when he's on the field, but it's very close in both categories. Uh, Kamara, yeah, was beat up last year. Both involved in the passing game a ton. So I mean, these are guys again that can be up there with Christian McCaffrey. If you can, t- if you can guarantee me they're healthy, they're probably two and three, battling for one. Uh, Clyde edwards Slayer, I got at seven. I, I really like edwards Slayer. He's my running back one in the draft, but that doesn't really matter. He What matters is he's an absolute perfect fit. He's going to get the load running the ball, and he can catch the ball out of the backfield and downfield. One of the better route running receivers I've seen really since Christian McCaffrey came out. He's that good, uh, and he's got a great system, a great quarterback to go along with it. So he's going to get the, the action. Nick Chubb at eight. Uh, I think a little risky because they have Kareem Hunt as well full-time now. And Stefanski was more of a fan of the backs that can catch the ball, you know, that are very good receiving backs. Nick Chubb can be. Kareem Hunt is one of the top-tier guys in that category, so that can take away a little bit from Chubb. But they're going to use the running backs a lot. Austin Eckler, I think, is a top-tier back here. 
Uh, they're going to play small ball. They're going to pass the ball to the back a lot. And what other back to, you know, do you like, you know, better than Eckler? You know, there's not too many in the NFL. Really, it's him, McCaffrey, Edwards, Lair. Edwards, Edwards, Lair, we haven't seen full time yet, or at all yet, I should say. Uh, Josh Jacobs, yeah, just about staying healthy. So, you know, missed some games down the stretch. But, uh, yeah, they're going to try to get him involved in the passing game a little more. So, actually, could be, he has some upside here. Could be better than 10. Kenyon Drake looks like a perfect fit in that Cardinals offense. Gets those big home run plays. Aaron Jones moves down a bit after, you know, having a, an electrifying fantasy season. Uh, and we'll talk about that in a second. I got him at the top of the risky picks. We'll talk about that in a second. Safe picks. Yeah, some pretty obvious. I mean, I, I think you know what you're going to get from these guys. Joe Mixon started off a little slow last year. They're trying to get kind of a new offense line under control. It still could be the scary part, but the, the, he's going to be involved in the passing game qu quite a bit there. Um, but, yeah, you, those are obvious safe guys. Risky picks. Aaron Jones at the top. Contract year for him. They draft A.J. Dillon in the second round. They like him a lot. They also have Jamal Williams. They're going to split a bit. They're going to give A.J. Dillon his run to see if he can be their future back. Aaron Jones will be the feature guy. That's why he's still in the top 12, uh, obviously, and he's very good and he's getting better. Uh, There's just a little bit of risk that comes along with that. Uh, the obvious for Dalvin Cook, Alvin Kamara, uh, the injury concern. Uh, you know, not major concern for Kamara. Uh, if that injury was kind of two years ago, I wouldn't even call him a risky pick. I wouldn't be concerned at all. It's just kind of he's kind of fresh off of it, uh, even though he was playing through it. Um, but there, it's it's definitely a concern, a little bit of a concern there. Uh, James Conner, uh, it's an obvious one. Le'Veon Bell because Gase doesn't like to run the ball a whole bunch, and he's hyping up Frank Gore. Uh, they're gonna take some stress. He's saying they're gonna take some stress off Le'Veon Bell, which makes no sense to me. Ravens running backs. I don't want to say I'm staying away from him. I had Mark Ingram last year, and I was, you know, very impressed with him. Uh, you know, he helped me win my league, uh, among other running backs, too. I, you know, I really liked my running backs last year, and Mark Ingram was a huge part of that. I was surprised at how good he was. Uh, but they have J.K. Dobbins. They have Gus Edwards. They have Justice Hill. So that's a little scary. They're probably going to test the water, see if J.K. Dobbins is their guy, you know, over the future at times. Broncos running backs, I, I don't even know what they're going to do, if it's going to be 50-50. Um, Lindsey's been very good for them. It would make it wouldn't really make sense to kind of just knock his reps down big time, you know, right off the bat. But I can see it as the season goes on. I'm probably not touching either of those guys. The Colts running backs. I think Marlon Mack should be the guy. He's been fantastic for them. And Taylor's a rookie. Um, you know, I think Taylor needs to be. Maybe not short yardage, but kind of like third down, you know, second, you know, long situations where you want to go for that home run play. You know, when they're up in game, I can guarantee this when they're up in games, they this is why I'm staying away from Colts running backs. When they are up in games and they're pretty confident, they're basically going to get conservative like they should run the ball, run the clock. Marlon Mack will be the guy. Marlon Mack will be the guy. I can guarantee you that. I just don't know who's going to get the load when it, when in those games where it's close. In the beginning of games, it's up in the air. Um, I, Marlon Mack is probably the safer one to go with. Niners running backs, I mean, you, you know, Mostert was really starting to get going. Looks like a really good fantasy option. It's, I wouldn't be against taking him. McKinnon's back. They paid him big money for a reason. He fits Shanahan's uh, system so well that uh, they're going to use them. They also have Tevin Coleman as well. Patriots running backs, James White's been pretty solid, but they have a, a collection of running backs that I just don't know. Sony Michelle's, I think, their best one. They could go at Lamar Miller. Uh, I've been hearing Damian Harris looks, looking great in practice. Who knows? Lions running backs, um, Carry on Johnson's probably going to start the year. DeAndre Swift will probably take over at one point. I've heard he's have a hard time kind of finding his role. Maybe, maybe it has to do with the playbook a little bit, so... Um, you know, I'm, I'm, and they signed Jonathan Williams, so I'm scared of the Lions running backs not taking them. Sleepers, Todd Gurley, I think I have a pretty good year, pretty productive year. Won't get an insane amount of carries like we're used to in the past, but he'll get his touchdowns. David Johnson, I think, will have a step up here for the Texans. He'll get his action. I think he fits that offense pretty well. Kareem Hunt, like I said, the fancy likes running backs that are very, very good in the that in the passing and that can be involved catching the ball. And now we see him full time, not as a starter, but full time, no suspension on the Browns. Ronald Jones, Arians is. Talking him up quite a bit, you know, that he's their guy 
And he's talented. That's never really been the concern. The concern was kind of getting into the playbook, couldn't do it right away. Then they do a coach change. He kind of had to learn another playbook, picked it up a little bit last year, and now second year under Arians with Tom Brady. Ronald Jones can really pick it up. It is a little risky because they have a number of other running backs, Deshaun McCoy, Keyshawn Vaughn. Cam Akers, I think, will get the load for the Rams. A little risky because they have a guy like Daryl Henderson, but Akers seems like a full-time back where Dar- or an every-down back where Daryl Henderson feels like kind of a home-run guy using the passing game a bit. They can actually use both. Um, you know, a- Akers can handle a load for sure. So I think they go Akers as their starting back. Uh, Alexander Madison, because the obvious is because Cook can get hurt. But what I'm thinking is they can limit Cook early to kind of keep him fresh. They don't want to wear him down for crunch time in the season. And Madison, that was only his rookie year last year, and he looked like starting running back. Uh, talent-wise, and now they're going to get him going. They're more confident with him in the second year. Um, David Montgomery I had on here, but hopefully people listen to this because as I'm recording this, there's rumors that he went down in practice. So that's something to monitor here. Um, nothing confirmed yet, but David, I would like David Montgomery to step up this year, but um, injury-wise, not looking good. So that's something for you to look up. I'll keep you posted on Twitter. And that's just something that popped up right when I started recording this, so unfortunate. And Anthony McFarland Jr. is kind of a deep sleeper on the Steelers. They desperately, desperately needed speed of the backfield. They got it with McFarland. He's a home run hitter, great vision, can catch the ball out of the backfield. And their starting running back, James Conner, uh, you know, does get hurt, unfortunately, a, a bit there. So, um, yeah, that's, that's a deep sleeper to look out for. Receivers. I got maybe a little bold. I got Chris Godwin at the top, though. Uh, highly productive in general and fantasy wise last year and that was his first breakout year first year under Arians where he found kind of his perfect fit in perfect role I suppose Um, you know and I think second year with Brady Brady's always loved these types of receivers that can kind of play everywhere run every route but it's going to be dominant in the slot and that is why I like him he's going to get reception after reception if you're playing in a PPR this is fantastic he's going to be highly productive uh, I like Chris Goblin for fantasy at the top. Michael Thomas, probably the best in terms of talent receiver in the NFL. Um, yeah, definitely towards the top. I mean, that's, it's no question there. He's actually getting better. That's a scary thing. Where's Drew Brees at? You know, is there any type of you know slight decline? That's kind of what you wonder about. They had Emmanuel Sanders. Um, you know, is there any more production going that way? Julio Jones at three. I mean, these are obvious things. DeAndre Hopkins at four. Uh, a high-powered passing offense that kind of makes him go up, maybe towards the top. But then there is a lot, uh, you know, a lot of receivers that the Cardinals can go to, so that kind of uh, kind of keeps him the same. Then Devonte Adams kind of go back and forth on a guy like Devonte Adams. He's really the only guy, like the top, clear top-tier guy that's going to be getting the action. So that's a lot of production. He has Aaron Rodgers on. That's a lot of productions. The downside, um, I think defenses will really like kind of stack him. They'll kind of uh, they'll bracket him. Um, you know, double coverage, keep a guy over the top. Could be basically triple. It might be ridiculous. So that's why it scares me a little bit. But going to be dominant production-wise. Tyreek Hill, another obvious one. Mike Evans there at seven. Kenny Galladay, it just, you just need to stay. You need, Stafford needs to stay healthy. Kenny Galladay's on his way up. White Cooper Cup a lot. No Brandon Cooks. Uh, they do the Some of Brandon Cooks' uh, reps, looks, will go to Van Jefferson, but not all. Cooper Cup, an improving guy, perfect guy for the system. We'll get a ton of action. Stephon Diggs, uh, a team that will want to feed him the ball more, maybe than the Vikings did, uh, in my opinion. And, um, you know, they trade for him for a reason. They want to keep him happy. So I think he'll have a ton of action, some big playability. I really like Tyler Boyd. Uh, I think he'll be the best receiver on the Bengals. This is an easy target from the slot. It's really easy to get the ball to. It's going to be Joe Burrows, Justin Jefferson, who led college football in uh, in receptions with 111. Tyler Boyd was one of the more dominant slot receivers last year in, in NFL. Um, so I think that'll be a great connection. Keenan Allen at 12. Uh, Mike Williams hurt right now, so a lot of the production will go to Keenan Allen. I just worry about the big playability downfield from the quarterback position. But I think Tyrod Taylor, if he's the guy, I think him and Keenan Allen – um, you know, could could come up with a good some good uh, connection there. Uh, safe picks, I think pretty obvious ones. Um, the ones you see listed, I think, are pretty safe. You throw, the guys I didn't talk about yet. AJ Brown will be the guy. It's an easy target getting the getting the ball, screen pass. Um, you know, short slant downfield anywhere, and he'll run after the catch. 
Al Robinson would easily be the top target for the Bears. He seems like he's getting better and better every year. Terry McLaurin, top target for the Redskins, broke out already in his rookie year. He's got a connection with Haskins, we know that. Uh, and DJ Moore, I think, is a pretty safe pick where you can get him. Another guy you can get the ball in any way. Uh, risky picks, Keenan Allen kind of talked about it. You know, the quarterback changes. I think they'll play a lot of small ball. I think most of the secondaries will kind of focus on Keenan Allen. Uh, Steelers receivers, because there's so many good ones that I don't – one game it's going to be Juju. One game it's going to be Deontay Johnson. One game might be Chase Claypool. So uh, Juju's probably is, definitely is the best one of the group. I also worry about Big Ben staying healthy. That's the other concern. Browns receiver is a little risky. I wouldn't be against taking them, but this is an offense that's going to focus on running backs first and then actually tight ends. Um, you know, they'll have those random big plays to the receivers, but I'm not expecting, you know, one of them to have a crazy amount of receptions. You know, um, if, if you're going to pick one that's better than the other, obviously it's Odell, but, you know, there's a chance he has less receptions, you know, because just based on that offense. A.J. Green, I'm scared of taking because injury concerns. Same with T.Y. Hilton. Same with Emmanuel Sanders has minor injuries pop up. Uh, and, yeah, the, the, I think the Saints want to open things up more downfield. They don't have a ton of downfield plays. Uh, but I it's I don't know if that's really because receiver. I think Michael Thomas can do that. Uh, I think that's just really not their offense. So how will Sanders be involved? I mean, if he's on the field, he's going to be good. Uh, but it's just a little risky. Julian Edelman without Brady, a little scary. And Larry Fitzgerald kind of not being the number one anymore, being the two, and them also getting ready, getting prepared for to move on from Larry Fitzgerald in the future. They may want to use some of those other younger receivers even to step up ahead of him to see if those guys are up for the task for the future. Sleepers, I like Hollywood Brown a lot. Uh, ready for kind of a breakout year here in in uh, year two. And, uh, yeah, has the big playability. He's a very talented dude, obviously. Brandon Cooks and Will Fuller. I like Cooks a little more probably. I think a little, little safer. That's why. Uh, they traded a lot for him for a reason. He fits their offense. Uh, he'll have the big playability there with Deshaun Watson. Then you got Jalen Rager. I, I th- it's a tough one because I think – you know he's the be- I think he's the best receiver on the Eagles, and I think he can get him the ball in any way. End around, screen pass down. He's great downfield. Hearing hearing get good things recently in um in practice. Heard he burned Darius Slay deep uh, yesterday, so that, that's that's good. Doesn't mean a whole lot, but that's good. Uh, I think it's a perfect type of receiver for Carson Wentz. They have injury problems with their other receivers. That's kind of good news if you're a fantasy owner of Jalen Rager. You know, the bad news is they can, they, I can see them rolling out there. You know, the first snap on offense and Rager's on the sideline. I can see it. It shouldn't be, but I can see it. Jamison Crowder is a safe bet to be the more dominant receiver on the Jets. You know, their guy's really going to take his spot there. I think it's a pretty safe pick. Preston Williams injured last year. He's actually really good. Uh, better than what people give him credit for. Paris Campbell, uh, some kind of minor injury scare. Apparently he was in a car accident or something, something to monitor. Uh, but he's going to get going for the Colts, hearing great things out of camp. Anthony Miller is the Bears receiver too. It seems like he's getting better and better, pretty underrated receiver. Uh, Tyrell Williams has an injury pop up. He doesn't want to have surgery. Uh, that can kind of keep him you know, limited here and there. Uh, Brian Edwards is his backup. They're, they The guy they drafted from South Carolina here, he's – kind of that type of receiver, same type of receiver that has more upside too, so they'll use him quite a bit. And a deep sleeper here, a rookie from Ohio State, K.J. Hill, who's a pretty solid route runner from the slot. Uh, like I mentioned, Mike Williams injured, a little scary there for the Chargers. It's really just Keenan Allen out there. You know, I like Joe Reed. It's a guy that can give the ball in the backfield, but who's kind of going to step up as more of a receiver here uh, that can do multiple different things at the receiver position? I think more of K.J. Hill. It's a deep, deep sleeper. Maybe a guy that you're going to have to pick up early, uh, you know, off of waivers there. Uh, something to keep an eye on there for sure. Moving on to the tight ends, Kittle and Kelsey at the top. I like Waller at three. Uh, tons of production. He didn't have that many touchdowns and was still top tier uh, in fantasy tight ends. And I think he can kind of can add t- touchdowns to his game, um, you know, scores to his game there. So I like Waller. Uh, Mark Andrews at four, touchdown machine. Zach Ertz at five. Hunter Henry, like I said, the Chargers are kind of thin on the weapon, especially if Mike Williams is out. So Hunter Henry, I didn't know get the ball into some short to medium routes there. Austin Hooper, uh, they like to favor the running backs, then the tight ends. A lot of play action, dump to the tight end in that's the fancy offense with of the Browns. So I like Hooper. They went out and made him a uh, highest paid guy at one point uh, for a reason. TJ Hawkinson. Will be very productive. This is a very good tight end prospect, and it's really going to step up this year. 
uh, will be highly productive for the Lions. Jared Cook at nine, another one that's productive for the in the Saints offense. Johnny Smith will step up this year, kind of solidified his role. They gave him the ball in different ways and kind of made himself known to be uh, better kind of in the red zone game that we m- might thought at one point. Evan Ingram, just about staying healthy, but definitely a weapon. And I'll put Gronkowski at 12. Could have a limited role, but it also could be a touchdown machine. Safe picks, some pretty obvious ones there. I also threw Noah Fant. I think he'll be pretty productive. Was more productive than I expected rookie year. Obviously, I first, we knew he was a first-round talent. He got taken in the first round, but mainly uh, athletic profile guy. Kind of had to develop a little bit, but was really good right off the bat pretty much, especially when Drew Locke came in. So uh, I think it's a pretty safe pick. Risky, obviously, Gronkowski could be limited until crunch time. Higby, because they got a huge tight end room over there, adding Hopkins as well. Cook, in the past we've seen some minor injuries pop up on Cook. Uh, and he is getting up there at age, so it's it's nothing major. Excuse me a little bit. Evan Ingram with the injuries. Eric Ebron, I think, is a good fit for the Steelers' offense, uh, but has been a little bit of a letdown, especially last year, and they have so many receiving options. Claypool can be a similar style player, more of a receiver, but that could limit Ebron. Eifert with the injury concern. Ian Thomas is kind of the sole guy on the Panthers, but uh, it's tough because Matt Rule, who is involved in offensive game plan and defensive game plan, he he just never liked using tight ends. You look back, way back last year, he's just not a tight end guy, and that could explain why they haven't really picked anybody up. But then you, you look at Joe Brady, who's their offense coordinator, like Thaddeus Moss, who actually can't figure it out, wasn't drafted, and surprisingly, even though he looked like a weapon. So... It's kind of back and forth with that. Just a little scared of a, of a Matt Rule tight end there. And Seahawks tight ends, because there's so many of them and because of a lot of injury uh, possibilities there. Sleeper, I think people are sleeping on Hawkinson. I think he's better than people think. Same with Jonu Smith. Electrifying player will be their second best option when the ball is in the air after A.J. Brown and pretty close to that. It's clearly above maybe a guy like Corey Davis as a receiving option. Uh, Noah Fant, talked about him. Dawson Knox, a pretty good rookie last year. He's getting better. Uh, you know, and I think they'll they'll use him a bit in some play action. Chris Herndon, I'm liking him a lot more and more. I think it's a pretty safe pick. I, I think you know he'll be better than some guys that have bigger names. You know, um, Herndon that is, and I you know I think he'll probably be their second best target after Jamison Crowder, uh, and I think he'll be a good and you know a good red zone option. Uh, Asi Asi for the Patriots. I think he'll be. It's a mystery, but I think he'll be their tight end one. I think Cam Newton him can develop a connection. He's pretty. Uh, He's playmaker like he's athletic, and Cole Komet could be a deep sleeper at my number one tight end in the draft, uh, the actual draft. So the my number one rookie, even though Asiasi can have more production this year, but I think yeah you know, the the Bears needed a, a good red zone target in the passing game. That's Cole Komet. He's very strong, contested catcher. Uh, they'll use him in the kind of the middle of the end zone and you know goal line phase as well. Uh, but they do have Jimmy Graham, so that scares me a little bit. But I think Komet's the safer bet there uh, in the red if if you're looking at the red zone game. So I like Komet. And I'm not going to focus on this too, too much. Uh, Here's my strategy for defense. This is how it's always been. Uh, I I draft defense last. I I play it unless it's not guaranteed to be last. You know, if somebody's sitting there that I really like, you know, possibly. But I normally play defense by week. I, I find myself, no matter what I do, dropping, picking up a defense pretty much every week. That's always what I've done. It's worked out for me. So that's me. Uh, it's tough to rank defenses because there is a, and special teams combined, because there is a ton, a ton of luck involved in that. Um, it's just turnover, turnovers take skill, but there's a lot, you know, the, the, how many how many turnovers in an NFL season are tip balls that float in the air or you know, it's a quarterback that really fumbles. The ball came out. The team picked it up, scoop, scoop and score. Uh, you know, a, a punt return for a touchdown. It's rare, but sometimes it'll happen. It's, there's a lot of luck involved. Um, you know, teams that I th- and I think will pick up their turn. The Bears were a little low on turnovers last year, but there's a lot of players on that team that will that I trust to get turnovers. So that's why I kind of put the Bears up a little higher. And that Chargers secondary will get it. The Niners, the combination of forcing fumbles and getting those interceptions, um, you know, the Broncos, I think, will pick it up this year. And the Bills secondary can get their hands on the ball. Uh, the Vikings started to really, really pick it up, you know, getting turnovers at the end of the year. So that's a – the Vikings are uh, – I think that's a defense that it's it's probably declining a little bit. 
because we we used to know the Vikings defense is one of the top tier. It's really not bad anymore. It's declining, but it's still good. So I think compared to the past Vikings teams, I think they give up more yards, but I also think they get more turnovers. So that's a sneaky team to look out for. Patriots is tough. They lost so much. The secondary will be great. Pa- Bucks and Packers could be the sleepers right there. And kickers, yeah, I think Buck. I think the, the clear top three, Bucker, Tucker, Lutz. I think Bucker and Tucker and Lutz there. I think those are the top three guys. I think you're you're good to go with any of those guys. I'm kind of getting higher on Zerline, the idea of him with the Cowboys there. I like that. Uh, looking at teams that, you know, Prater can boot it, but looking at teams that will probably kick a lot of field goals. You know, the Vikings seem to kick a lot of field goals. Dan Bailey there was pretty good last year. Uh, but, you know, a guy that we didn't expect to be that good a year before it wasn't looking too good. So, um, yeah, I, I don't know. Inconsistency with a lot of these kickers. It's another thing that if wouldn't be surprising if I'm dropping and picking a guy up every year, per, or every week, I should say. So I don't like to focus too much on, on defense and kickers there. And you'll see kind of my strategy. We'll do three different mock drafts. Um, you know, maybe one from the second pick, you know, first is pretty obvious. So maybe the one from the second pick, one from the middle, maybe one from the 11th pick, uh, to get different ideas, different perspectives there. If you want to join our fantasy league, go to that patreon.com slash the goat house link in the description, uh, in that bottom tier there. There's also other things that you can get check out that Twitter. It's a must follow 60 K sub goal. Please help us get there. Full coverage in season. Cannot wait. It's almost here. Can't believe it. That's going to do it, though. That's going to do it for this one. Please like if you enjoyed the video. Subscribe to the channel. Turn notifications on so you don't miss a thing. We got you covered uh, throughout NFL season, unlike anyone else. Uh, But, yeah, again, that's going to do it. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.